Hello, Aubrey. How's everything going? Hi, Lindsay. I am great. How are you? Excellent. Do we have a question about New York City life today? Yes, I have a question for you. I know we both lived in New York, and this mm -hmm. is something interesting to know about New Yorkers. Have you ever lived in a walk-up? I have, actually. All New Yorkers have. <laughs> most New Yorkers have, I would say. <laughs> I um, not all, but most. Yeah, I've lived most in three different sure. walk-ups in New York City. Yes. Oh, man. Yes, right. I randomly did not because <clears throat> when I moved to New York, and this is rare, most people who move to New York are single and are making their yeah. way in the world. I moved there. I already had two children. And with the stroller wow. and all of the things, I was like, we have to have an elevator building. Oh, yeah. No, that's And impossible. so we sacrificed living downtown to living uptown where we could <clears throat> afford an elevator building because the higher you get uptown, the cheaper the rent gets. <laughs> yeah. What years were you there again? What was what, what was the time period? 2008 to 2010. So okay. I completed my master's degree there. I taught in the Bronx. <laughs> And yeah, we were there. My husband was home with the kids. He was like Mr. Yeah. Mom, <laughs> luckily. Yeah. And ooh, it was tough. It's tough it's to have fun. kids in the city. It's a lot of work. Yeah, we were in New York at the same time. That's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. We could have met. That would have been I know. awesome. <laughs> yeah. We maybe did cool. run into each other somewhere and just didn't know. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Life is weird like that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so what are we getting into today? Talking about walk-ups. Walk up. Where are we yes, going with this one? exactly. Right. We recently answered part of a listener question. Michelle in China sent a really interesting question asking about the phrasal verbs run up and walk up. Mm -hmm. So we covered run up in episode 2003, how to up your English vocabulary game. And we promised we would cover walk up soon. And here it is, guys. Luckily, you subscribed and are following. If you didn't and just happened upon this episode, don't miss 2003, which was yes. the first part. And be sure to follow. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes. Yeah. Hit follow on All There's English right now, guys, so that you get the episodes when they drop, right? You don't want to yeah. have to come back every time. We can actually you know, drop right into your, into your podcast app, your podcast player, as soon as the episode is available. Okay. So, yeah. Aubrey, what would be the first use of walk up that our listeners need to know about? Yeah. So it's a couple of different phrasal verbs. And this one, we usually collocate it with the preposition to, we'll say walk up to. Mm -hmm. And this phrasal verb means to walk towards someone or something, but often in a confident way, like he just walked up to the front desk and asked to <laughs> speak to the CEO. Oh, okay. So it <clears throat> does this mean a little yeah, so a little bit more confident, a little bit unexpected? Is that what yeah, we're doing? Here? Almost like surprisingly confident, surprisingly um yeah, unexpectedly confident in a situation yeah. maybe where you shouldn't be confident and they are anyway. Interesting. I like that. Oh, what about the slang rocked up? Yeah, that this I've heard is, a lot in Australia. Okay. Oh, and Jessica says it all the time. Probably she has Australian friends. Because she, well, she did her master's in an Australian gotcha. university. That might be That's it. probably I'm why. Yes, she'll sure. say over on IELTS Energy, she'll say, you guys can rock up to the exam and get a great score, you know, after yes. our strategies. And so that is just a slang version of this phrasal verb, walk up. You can say, you guys are going to walk up to that exam confidently and ready. So we use a slang. You can switch it and say rocked up. Oh, I love Aussie slang. I'm yes. not sure if that's 100% Aussie or if it's also British. I've only heard that in Aussie English, but oh, we should have our friend Pete or someone else from Australia on the show again soon to find out. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, it's kind of been um, adopted into my vernacular just because I'm around Jessica a lot and she says yeah. it a lot. <laughs> so it feels very normal to me now. The average native speaker might be like, what, what? What yes, is that? What? what? <laughs> All right, I love it. So what's another way that we use walk up, Aubrey? What's number two? Yeah, so this phrasal verb, we use it to mean to escort someone upstairs, like to okay. a floor up, right? So maybe Jeffrey will walk you up to the office on the third floor. So imagine you've come into a building where maybe it's hard to find the office you need, or maybe they just want to make sure you go where you're supposed to go. That maybe there are rooms you're not supposed to go. So they'll have someone right. escort you up the stairs or up the elevator to where you need to go. Right. And this is really interesting because we do not use this for items. In 2003, we talked about how we'd say run up. Can you run this up? Can you take this up to the third floor? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't say can you walk this up to the third floor. That'd be <clears> weird, <throat> but we do use that for people. I see. Interesting. Yeah. And we right. would not use run up for people. How weird would that be if you say, Jeffrey will run you up to the third floor? No. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. Such nuances in English, right? That we mm. need to know about here. Natural yeah, so nuances. Run up for items, paperwork, something, a thing that you have to mm -hmm. take upstairs and walk up to escort people. 
And yeah. if you're not going upstairs, we don't add that up. You might, you hmm. just say, right, security walked him to the front door. But right. if for some reason security has to take him up a floor, security walked him upstairs. <laughs> upstairs. I love it. Yeah. So good. Okay. So is there a third use of walk up? Aubrey, though, this is the one that we talked about in the beginning. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. The A building. This is a noun. Mm -hmm. It's a multi-floor apartment building that only mm -hmm. has stairs. Right. Mm -hmm. So Lindsay lived in a fourth floor walk up. Someone might say, I live in a third floor walk up. I wish we had an elevator. That means they live on the third floor of an apartment building that only has stairs. There's no elevator to get you up, no matter how heavy the thing you're carrying is. You are walking yeah. that couch up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, there's certain vocabulary that's very relevant to New York. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know they have walk ups in Philly and Boston, but I don't know if they use it as much. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Actually, I think in Boston, the apartment buildings are more like houses or smaller oh, or they're huge luxury Duplexes. buildings. But in New York, you end up with a lot of these, they call them like pre-war style, mm -hmm. fourth floor, four, five, six floor buildings. And that's where you see the, the use of this walk up term as a noun. Interesting. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the, I hear it often on because there's so many TV shows and movies set in New York. So, so you guys many. are for sure going to hear this on podcasts, see it in movies and TV. And now you're going to know what they're talking about when they say I live you know, in a fifth floor walk up. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have to do, have we not done this yet? We'll have to do another episode about other specific vocabulary to New York apartments. For example, railroad style. Do you know oh, that one? Yeah. Oh. I can't remember what that means. I've heard railroad style, but I can't, we'll definitely need to do a future episode on that. Coming Lindsay, back I feel to like guys hit follow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'll learn what railroad style is and why you never want to live in one. <laughs> yes. um, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Do we so, have a role play? Yeah, well, first I wanted to share just this quick grammar note. We may have briefly touched on this in episode 2003, but mm -hmm. walk up can also just be a verb with a preposition. It's not a phrasal verb because the meaning doesn't change. We just use up as a preposition to talk about a higher position. And we talked in 2003 about how we'll talk about in New York or in a city to talk about going uptown, right? right. Um, he walked up the block or, you know, so that's going to come up in the role play, just FYI. And okay. would say like, she walked up the steps, he walked up the stairs, my parents mm -hmm. walked up the road to mean to move like further north, which is interesting, Ooh. or in a city to move further uptown. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So our listeners are going to be, is this going to appear in yes. the role play then? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to use all those phrasal <laughs> verbs as well as that. So then we'll, we'll go over it afterward to make sure you're clear on all of these meanings. All right, let's go for it. So in this role play, Aubrey, we are meeting for a dinner at a restaurant. Here we go. All right. I live just a few streets downtown from here, so it was quick to walk up to here. Nice. I live close to in a fifth floor walk up. Oh boy, you're getting your steps in walking up and down all those stairs. Oh, for sure. I love my neighbors though, so I don't think I'll move. A couple of times a week, I walk my neighbor up to his apartment. He's elderly and he needs to lean on me a bit and I'm glad I can help him out. That is awesome. How did you start helping him? I don't know if I'd dare rock up to somebody and offer to help. He asked me for he asked for my help and I'm glad he did since I also didn't know if he'd if I'd walk up to someone and offer. I don't know if I'd walk up to someone and offer. So I agree with you there, right, yes. Aubrey? Yeah, right. Yeah. Just so we can use both of those meanings, right? I'm saying, I don't know if, dare, if I'd dare rock up to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd walk up to someone and offer. Same meaning, yeah. but I'm using the more slangy way. Yeah, it's always interesting because there's sometimes we have that thought, are they going to be offended if I offer help or it's too bad, right? It's, I actually it's have a really bad. funny story about this. Very briefly, guys, mm -hmm. I was at a store <laughs> and there was um, a man there who was saying he didn't understand, right? And mm -hmm. there was like a, a person there trying to talk to him. And so uh, walking by, I was like, oh, I can help. I can translate because I spoke, I'm like, I speak Spanish. I can translate. Yeah. And the man who was saying he didn't understand gave me this hilarious look. You guys come <clears> to YouTube so you can see this. He did this. So I was like, oh, I can translate. And he went, <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized the person talking to him was like a salesperson that was trying oh, to sell him like a credit card. So he's pretending he didn't understand so that he wouldn't have to talk to them. Right. That's so hilarious. that I just said, like, I heard what the guy was saying. And I'm like, oh, he's trying to sell you this credit card. And the guy was like, 
no thank you <laughs> that is so funny i, I was love like that. i should just mind my own business maybe <laughs> so funny that's funny oh mm. gosh what we can say through our faces right i know <laughs> this is the expression guys if you're not on youtube he just kind of gave me that look that's like thanks for nothing <laughs> thanks but no thanks right I thanks for nothing speak english yeah. just fine i was trying yeah. to get this guy to leave me alone <laughs> i'm like oh my bad <laughs> i love it i love it all right all right so let's, let's go, go through, through this role play, play. yeah Mm -hmm. I first said, you know, I live just a few streets downtown, so it was quick to walk up to this restaurant, right? So I'm saying, oh, I'm, I just live downtown, so I walked north. I would say I walked up to here. Yes, right. And that's it, unique to New York, right? If you're going to say that downtown from here. So that's interesting, right? Oh, I and I feel like we brought this up in 2003 <clears throat> that would also, like when I go home to Idaho, I'd be like, I'm coming up next week. I can't wait. Because it's north. Mm -hmm. And they right. would say, we're coming down to Phoenix. They yeah. South, right? So in the same way that in New York, we say, walk uptown, we would do it anywhere for north. Yes. I love that. I love that. Uptown, downtown. Uptown, mm -hmm. downtown. But you don't north hear south. uptown. There probably are a few other cities in the U.S. where you do hear uptown. But it's really notorious for New yes. York City. Yeah. When someone says uptown. uptown, I think New York. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if people 100%. who live in other cities are offended. They're like... We have an uptown too. It's not just New York. I'm trying mm. to remember if Montreal, I lived in Montreal and I can't remember if we said uptown down. I don't think so because I feel like it was more circular. Whereas Manhattan is so sort of long and skinny and tall that it is very like north south. Yeah, it kind of owns that term, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of downtowns, right? There's yes. Lots of downtowns, but Not there aren't too many uptowns. uptowns. <laughs> <That's> interesting. <laughs> that is really interesting. I love that we've both lived in New York, so we can kind of sync yeah. up on this. It's so pretty fun. cool. It's pretty cool. So then next, I said, nice. I live close to in a fifth floor walk up. And again, insider New York term uh, just means an apartment building without an elevator. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, first of all, I said, who boy, which I do that a lot. Who? Oh boy, oh, never heard that. <laughs> to express my surprise, you've never heard that. Nope. It maybe is a, a regional northwest <laughs> thing. Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they said you're getting your steps in walking up and down all those stairs. So this is that just um, going upstairs, right? So the same yes. thing. This verb walk will use the preposition up. Doesn't make it a phrasal verb. It mm -hmm. just is a preposition to say walking either upstairs, like up physically, um, not north, but you know, in elevation yeah. up, or up north so just walking up and down okay yeah. i yeah. love it and then i said for sure i love my neighbors though so i don't think i'll move a couple of times a week i walk my neighbor up to his apartment so to walk someone up to their apartment we talked earlier in the, in the episode guys if someone escorts you somewhere right like in a nice hotel the you know the bellman might walk you up to your room with your bags yes. or something like that mm -hmm. right exactly and this mm -hmm. is a good thing you know you might you mm -hmm. might escort someone who needs help i had to my sister was injured she injured her knee when we were in mexico so i had to walk her up to the room and then down to the pool cuz she needed to be escorted cuz she had hurt her knee and couldn't walk on her own yeah not good not i know good. you such don't want to get hurt when you're abroad that's not fun uh, no right not fun Mm -mm. Okay, what'd you say next? So then I said, I don't know if I would dare rock up to someone and offer to help. Jessica would absolutely say it this way. Australians <laughs> would probably say it this way, right? And yeah, it just yeah. means I don't know if I would approach them so boldly, sort of, right? I don't know if boldly. I would walk up to them in such a confident way. Yeah, I never knew that rock up has that kind of like connotation of boldness and confidence. I never knew that actually. I just thought it meant mm -hmm. to go somewhere, but now I'm learning. <laughs> well, and I'm curious because it might be both. Like in Australia, they might just use it to mean walk. Like, oh, I rocked up mm. to the grocery store, da, 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 da. Like it might not always mean with confidence. Yeah. I do. I definitely hear it that way as well, right? When it's slangy, rocked up to, but I don't know. I haven't been to Australia. I would love to go. So they might yeah. use it for just to mean walking. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll do another episode here in Allers English about mm. different ways to say a word that convey you're doing that thing with confidence. That'd be Ooh, a cool episode. That would be a think? cool episode. I love that idea. Yeah, we'll do it. All right. And then what is the last thing? What did I say? Yeah, and you said, I also don't know if I'd walk up to someone and offer. So this is interesting because mm -hmm. it is like some some people, even if even in Australia or wherever we are, some people are more likely to use slang than others. And in this role play, I'm the type of person who might say, I don't know if I'd dare rock up to somebody. And you're the type of person who'd say, yeah, I don't know if I would walk up to someone either, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're not, so you're cool. not quite so slangy here. 
-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, for our takeaway, our, our additional takeaway today, Aubrey, is the meta message, like what you guys have just seen in our conversation, I want you to pay attention to as well. The connection that can happen around specific vocabulary when you've had a shared experience, not necessarily together with someone, but you've both lived in the same city, you've like eaten at the same restaurant, some kind of culture that you've shared. You can connect on that. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why you want to strike up conversations about all kinds of different things, because you're looking for those commonalities. What do we share? Yes. What's something that we can bond on? I do that all the that's time. So cool. I'll just yes. ask people, you kind of play that game of like, where are they from and how many kids do they have and what da, 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 and then yes. eventually you land on something you have in common. Yeah, 100 percent. And that's why, you know, the more experiences that you can have, the better. So it, it, Michelle and I have talked about this on All Our English around TV shows. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be traveling the world, living in world capitals, right? It could just be you've watched this TV show. There's a special insider joke or vocabulary or character you can talk about. This builds connection, guys. Absolutely. So and the yeah. list of things that you can is unlimited, right? Mm -hmm. All the yeah. media you can take. If you've read the same article in the news, if you've listened yes. to the same podcast, like there's so many things. So expand, Amazing. you know, what you're willing to strike up a conversation about so that you can hit on those interesting things you have in common. I love it. So good. so good, guys. If you love our style and our value of connection, not perfection, when it comes to learning English, then go ahead and hit follow right now on this podcast. Aubrey, I'll see you back here very soon. Awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. Bye. Take care. Bye.